let me do the devil's advocate for a second. Um, yeah. So most of the Bitcoin holders, so I'll just, I'll just take a step back for a second. Mm -hmm. The initial idea is to have a network that is a user's network, right? A peer-to-peer -peer network with mm -hmm. user totally in control of their transactions and the, um, the network. And so most of the holders of Bitcoin are not doing that, right? And so they definitely benefit from a network. They benefit from the security that is brought by the miners because now they can hold their coins in complete security, but they're not paying anything. Yeah. Right? So in a way, I think that you could defend attacks on holders. No, they're helping provide. I'm leaving this call now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's like I told you, I'll do the devil's advocate. <clears throat> no, I Just understand that. No, but what are they doing? Sense. They're not doing anything. Everybody's got to keep a complete copy. A miner has to keep a complete copy of the ledger. They, they, it, it doesn't really add to anything for them to keep that complete copy of the ledger. It's always going to be there. It's always fixed. They have to do that. So you're asking them to do something. You're asking people to pay for something they have to do anyway. And, and that has to be done so you can check to make sure transactions haven't been spent before, that it's, that it is Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency you're talking about. You have to have the immutability and the history um, of those coins all the way back if you need to, all the way back to the genesis block of the blockchain. They have to do that. This is just whining and complaining. I have no, no sympathy. No, but that's, I don't think you answered the, the question, I believe. So what I'm trying to say is that if, if there are people that are at loss making this network run, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are people who are basically using the network because, in fact, if you're holding, you're actually using the network, right? Because like, that's how your, your money is there. Because you're not doing anything for the network. Because some people keep it running, right? I mean, you're, so, you're not doing anything for the network. And in fact, you don't need No, you're not a, doing anything. So you, you're benefiting from people that are keeping this network alive, right? And so what I'm saying is that those people, look, what's interesting is in one of the proposal that I mentioned was continuing emission. Continuing emission is a tax on everybody. It's exactly That's the true. same. It's just it's just a different form right but it, it is difficult like if you're not able to make the network sustainable then you will have to compensate one way or the other so i, I understand they break the question i don't like either the tax on holders i think that you have a major problem if you get there but but i think it was interesting to entertain the, the thought. I, I think i think they are providing the, the a feature i mean i'm not going to say it's the it's like the fee you get from a transaction, but they're keeping it off the market. Like they, like if they, if everybody just sold what they have, then Bitcoin's worth zero. So the fact that that they're <laughs> holding it is providing value to the to the entire network to everybody, including yeah. the miners. And that's what they've been told again: hodl it, keep it off the network. It limits what's available on exchanges, and that helps support the price right that's some simplistic economic principle that if somebody wants something and there's not enough they're willing to pay more for it in a way so it reverses that downward pressure but i don't know if that's the answer i no, I, I think, think it's I think just about becoming think, go ahead it's market dynamics that is totally the answer that's yeah. the the demand is is a slowly rising more than the than the supply rises sure. um and that causes the price to rise i mean that's that's basic economics that's like the first day in economics um <laughs> so certainly goes up and down but if they didn't hold if people didn't hold this that that wouldn't happen this, this is all peaceful there's no military nobody forcing anybody to do it, anything you're right if nobody yeah. wanted it and they all and they kept selling it and they were willing to sell it for nothing all the way down to nothing you're right there would be exchanges that that may have people who own coins on them that are at zero value um yeah we know you know we i know, mean that's we, we know that's, how that works like somebody would be stuck with something coin, right yeah that's how it yeah. is 
in every coin, including Divi right now, right? So we, sure. we Divi was unable to match that same supply and demand dynamic. Um, and Divi and for 95%, 99% of the other coins, even Cardano, Polkadot, they're all, they all have the same problem. They're unable to match their emission rates with, with the, the demand. Bitcoin is the exception. And that's the reason holders of Bitcoin or any coin shouldn't be taxed. Like they're already providing their functionality. Yeah. Right. So right now, it's right. also the reason so why we're coming up with the utility. It would change. <laughs> like if Bitcoin sustain at like 30 or 20K for a year or two, then you might feel like people who are not securing the blockchain, but then holding are give, like having a role, but I would think that now they're just going to lose the network completely. Yeah, but I then... don't think that that would happen. So, so we're we're talking about we're talking about the Carrington effect for the Earth. We're talking about a meteor coming and crashing and destroying human life. Bitcoin can be supported by people running fully indexed nodes. The issue is is the transactions. You need to have somebody willing to mine transactions. At a That's certain right. point in time, somebody, anybody is going to be willing to mine transactions. So in the extreme, it's unrealistic to think about this. It is so unrealistic because of the willingness of people to mine Bitcoin, pool mine Bitcoin, or even spin up a pool so others can mine on your pool. The willingness of people to do this, there will always be people willing to secure the chain. And, and I, I think that the fact that people run full nodes, I run a full node. That doesn't mean it's a mining node, but it's a fully indexed node on the network. I do it to support Bitcoin, um, just like I do for Divi, right? So I run a fully indexed validator, for, and it's a fully indexed node to support Divi <clears throat> and several other chains. There will always be people that are willing to do that. This conversation is speaking about such an anomaly, such something out on the far end of the probability spectrum that I think, I don't know, it's just a waste of time, not being rude, but the fact that somebody wants a HODL tax is laughable to me. It's not going to get there. I think if there is a per point in time where the emission per block, even in the next year or two, where there's too many miners, some are going to have to either cut the fat some are going to have to upgrade hardware. Some will drop out. Some will merge. And then that finds that economic balance. Satoshi said that from the beginning. Yeah.